Among the multiple known leaders in the VTuber industry, Motowaki Tanego is without a doubt the most well-known and most beloved figure. When Subaru had mistakenly read his name into Yago, the meme of the depressed idol company CEO suffering of his talents doing exactly everything he doesn't want them to, came to being. A man maimed to Holland back by the VTuber community years ago that it echoed to the general community and even popularized the trend for other corpo VTubers to also bully their own CEOs. While I have covered the stories of multiple VTubers and groups, I've actually yet to cover the story of a person that was so instrumental to the development of the VTuber industry behind the scenes, and which one is more deserving to be covered than the man that started Hololive. So set the fuck down, let's do some history. But before we continue, do you know what makes you a stranger to drama and haters? Language learning apps. More specifically, Babbel, the sponsor of this video. If you're a person that wants to learn other languages, you absolutely need something to help you with that, especially if you're looking to go to other countries. Language textbooks are notorious to be too informal and technical, but Babbel makes it so that you can learn languages that are actually practical in IRL situations. It can especially help me to avoid using other countries' no-no words so that I don't get cancelled and that no unruly events can take place while I am around. Words like Anjing, Anjing Lu Gov Block, even. Oh wait, did I just say an Indonesian no-no word? No, I did not. You don't speak Indonesian, so how would you know? But you will in just a few months if you use Babel. And if you'll use my link in the description, you'd even get 60% off with 20-day money-back guarantee. So go get Babel Anjing. It'll look really good on your resume. Motowaki Tanego, much like everyone else, was once just a regular student. He went to the Faculty of Science and Technology of Keio University, had a part-time job working at Sega, and eventually went to work on Imagineer, a game company that worked on games for Sanrio, the owner of well-known IPs like Agretsuko and Hello Kitty. Wait a minute. More specifically, he apparently worked on Sanrio's Timenet games, which were made for the Nintendo Game Boy Color and were released in 1998. The picture you're seeing here, this is Yago from around 1998. He worked as a game producer for Imagineer from 1997 until 2001, where he would be moved to another division in the company and become the overseer for a mobile site affiliated with multiple TV stations and publishers, the manager of the mobile internet division, whatever the hell that is. Come 2002 though, he would eventually leave Imagineer and launch the e-commerce branch of a cosmetic company called iStyle until 2005 and in 2006, became a key member of the founding of an advertising company called Interspire. In 2008, he would start up his own company called 30 Minute Inc., a kind of information service or news company. Yago would run this company until 2014, where he would eventually sell it to another company. All of this is to say that Yago's business feats are no joke. The guy pretty much founded three businesses and was always somehow a leader or manager of literally every company he worked in. The man is very business oriented, and his work history shows that he had a penchant and interest in anything related to tech and digital development. Despite his rather disarming and goofy demeanor, the guy is a sharp and intelligent man. However, come 2016, Yago would start another company that would focus more on VR development. This would be known as CoverCorp. And sometime later in 2017, a historical day for CoverCorp would come as they would eventually release their first product, a game changer for the company itself. And that product was none other than this shitty ping pong game. Look at those reviews. However, somewhere, someone, on the dark gloom of Japan, a starry-eyed 16-year-old girl would declare to the world and her friend a dream, a desire burning from deep within. The moment when she and her mother witnessed their first concert in Yokohama Arena as a child, she remembered the lights and the cheers, how her chest pounded and fluttered. She remembered how the emotions swelled within her, and she wanted to shine as brightly as the idols she saw that day. 
I want to be Aidoru, Sora said, and her friends said, Okay. So Achan browsed the internet and eventually found Cover Corp, where she would meet our main character Yago and he just accepted his fate, I guess. But this isn't the birth of Hololive, because while Tokinosora came to be in September of 2017, they weren't even a VTuber agency in the coming months. Also, Yago really only cemented his idol niche when he managed to strike a collab with Atre Akihabara, and he seemed to not exactly take VTubing seriously until Sora became popular because of the Christmas miracle. The name Hololive actually came from the VR app that Covercorp made back in December of 2017, and Sora was supposed to be just its mascot. In this time, Achan wasn't even officially a staff member, she was just a friend that would join Sora's shenanigans. The thing about Hololive and Yago is that he has shown especially in the darkest and lowest times of his people's careers that he genuinely cares for the people that work under him, and he wants them to succeed. Miyabi has sung Yago's praises, saying that Yago and Chinove were the biggest driving force as to why they were here in the first place, and why Holostars is still alive despite it being one hell of a massive disaster at launch. Suisei has also said that pretty much anyone can make him do anything. People just casually play with the guy on streams and just allows people to make funny content at his expense because he doesn't really care. Despite the memes of how his idol dreams are being crushed because of the yabainess of his talents, Yago is a man that really only wants to see people around him be successful and happy. This was a man that has personally taken care of his peers and genuinely looked after them. It's why many talents always praise Yago and as a result why we, the audience, would love him in turn. Originally, he even personally vetted the people that would become Hololive members. You can actually feel that he just wants people to be happy. It's why he allows himself to be the Hololive community's biggest punching bag. Why he is willing to undergo some dignity-shattering stuff just to keep the community entertained. And he does all of this while keeping that genuine and definitely happy smile. And while I may seem like I'm sucking his fat cock too much and I'm just spewing Hololive propaganda, I truly think he's a rare breed of a CEO. The VTuber landscape is ripe with greedy corporate execs and companies that prioritize profits. That's primarily why the backlash of these companies are so fierce. In an industry where we are essentially made to love people playing a kayfabe, companies rarely care about the people and focus mostly on the kayfabe. Yago stands out because not only is he one of the businessmen that genuinely cares about the people while understanding the cold sacrifices one must make to make the business succeed, but he also knows which lines he must not cross. I genuinely think that his reputation and the respect his name commands in the VTuber community is very much deserved. Of course, there are other leaders in the industry that's similar to him, but Yago is his own tier of uniqueness. Still, this video also serves as a warning to never put him above criticism and worship him like people do Elon Musk or something. Ultimately, Yago isn't some super genius or a god amongst men, and while his achievements deserve praise, his leadership is just as responsible for a lot of the bad things that happened in Cover Corp and Hololive as much as the good ones. People have to realize that there may be some things Yago has done, good or bad, that the public does not know. And while we can genuinely say that he seems like a good person, what we cannot say is that he's a perfect CEO or some kind of business Jesus. I'm just saying man, have a healthy dose of cynicism because while I enjoy Yago appearing on the shit ton of things that he's in, it's fair to believe that most stuff there are for PR reasons more so than anything. Which isn't necessarily bad, mind you. I just think it's scary to be just as parasocial to the CEO of the company hosting your favorite digital waifus as you are to the waifus themselves. Because at a certain point, you're going to be sweeping a lot of despicable things under the rug. Yago is not perfect, as he has occasionally made some mistakes. But this was a man that was doing his best despite all of that. Everyone makes mistakes, but not everyone can and would try to fix or rectify them. There is a stereotype in Japan and even in the West that Japanese companies and executives are cold, out of touch, and straight up soulless. That Japanese businessmen are afraid of change and adopting new technology, of new social norms. That they still stubbornly adhere to old world values, but Yago, as we've seen so far, is not like that. He's a man that puts himself out there more so than any other CEO we've seen in the community. And even beyond, he seems humble, exudes charisma by doing literally anything. 
it's quite an abnormal thing to see, honestly. Since we normally have the picture that CEOs in general are soulless, serious people that stay in their offices all the time and do whatever pretentious bullshit CEOs do. All of this and more are the reasons why everyone loves Iago. Why he's looked at as a role model not just as a meme in the VTuber community or a businessman in the corporate world, but also as a human being in a position of power. That is why hundreds of thousands, nay, millions, will say that Iago is best girl. Also, hear me out. Call me a schizo, but I genuinely believe Watson was the reason why Yago left Imagineer and eventually started Hololive. That bitch is leaving clues for us to find, God damn it! and I'm the only one smart enough to realize it. From causing Coco's entry into Hololive, from her one-week breaks always causing new VTuber debuts, from killing Olivia and causing Ollie's existence, from borrowing Crony's watch and forcing her into Hololive, I'm telling you man, Watson is playing all of us like a goddamn fiddle. I have a feeling that she has seen the final yab and went back in time to do something about it, I guess. No one knows what she's doing, but I have a feeling she's gonna